Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with War Thunder Ground Forces today, taking a live look at simulator battles with the M4 Sherman tank. And uh, the first day of patch 1.45, I believe, Americans were not able to participate in simulator battles, or at least they were removed temporarily. So now they're back. And uh, it's more of a Axis versus Allies scenario. So you have uh, Russian and American armor facing off against German. It's not the ideal scenario, but it is uh, far better than what we're seeing in arcade and uh, realistic battles with their mixed modes, which pretty much ends up being... <laughs> the American Civil War, since that's what everybody's playing. Uh, but let's face it, everybody's excited, and uh, when you provide a new nation to a game that has mm, a limited player base spread across multiple modes, then it's to be expected. So it's kind of a, a natural flaw uh, within the game's design, unfortunately. But uh, this Sherman is not fully upgraded as of yet. Uh, my M4A1 is. Uh, the A1 was actually the first uh, production Sherman. This one here, the M4, followed, uh, I think, two months after. Uh, however, the one that's presented within this game has some updates to it that were seen, I believe, in 1944, the addition of applique armor uh, to certain weak areas. Who is shooting, and what are they shooting at? So, otherwise, the M4 and the M4A1 are basically the same tank. One was uh, fitted with a cast hull, the other was welded. This one, game-wise, is technically a little bit better because you've got the applique armor, which does provide a bit more protection. Otherwise, they're almost the same. We are taking Alpha, but we want to watch out for German snipers. Namely, anything with a longer barrel than mine. <laughs> They will take you out quick. The downside to a lot of these games is it seems like I always get in late. Um, the one thing I like about World of Tanks is that everybody starts at the same time. Where in this, you can just get thrown into a match a minute or two later. and That can stink because it gives the enemy team a, a chance to move into a position that might prove advantageous for them. I know where the openings are, but I have no choice but to move. And I'm not 100% familiar with this map as it is newer, so shot out, careful. Oh, there you are, there you are, there you are. Yes, Critical, set of fire, done. Nice. Alright, that's about four, 450 meters, I would say, if we want to range that again. I've been trying to get into the habit of using my uh, elevation changes here. But I don't use it all the time, especially when I'm in a uh, stable position like this. I'm going to watch out this door here. They might be able to shoot through it, but he would have to be on the bridge first, I think. Uh, we are holding the objective, so the smart thing to do is to just protect it. Covering angles. Uh, worst case scenario, somebody tries to flip around me.
friendly moving forward. I'm worried about something behind me because I don't have anybody watching that, but they'd have to cross a bridge, I think, to get here. Oh, contact. Can I shoot through this? Yes, I can. He's going to back up. Hit, but it looked like it passed right through. Solid hit, but our loader's taking some damage. High velocity, 50 millimeter probably. Put some good rounds into him, but it wasn't enough. Crit, fire, and he's done. Whew, that was friendly. There's that guy again. Did he just move back or disappear? That looked kind of weird there. Somebody shooting at him. Now, this is pretty much what you have to do with these Shermans keep them in cover. You have armor, but you need to make the environment your extra armor. Hull down behind buildings, hills, whatever kind of cover that you can find. I think somebody's burning over there. Our guy may have taken him out. But also look for these openings. You see here? All that land. That's potential for them. And they're dead. We win. Maintain some good cover here. Took out a couple tanks. And that's what it's all about. So for me, I think I have different objectives when I play video games. I think uh, considering the fact that free-to-play games put extra pressure on a player it's hard for people to have fun in, in in a simulator battle mode you are being pressured to succeed with this scoreboard to look at your standing and you hear you're ranked oh this guy has more points more kills whatever assists it's added pressure to the player uh, you know why are these guys on the bottom you know why is that guy in the top more often than not, I'm the one with the worst score because I play it like it's real. And sometimes doing that is not the best way to earn uh, the most points in a video game or simulated experience. But I've had to decide between earning experience and credits and just having more fun. And I'd rather have more fun. Credits and experience to unlock these components, I think, can be done in arcade mode, which I actually did last night. I wanted to unlock my M4A1. I went into arcade, raffle stomped, and I bailed. And then I went into other modes. Because arcade mode to me is very easy. You've got a bullet drop indicator. You can't miss. Now, I don't get the most enjoyment out of playing that mode. Um, I almost just feel that it's necessary. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting here trying to unlock components forever. There's not enough reward in, in RB and SB. I've mentioned this before. Uh, there needs to be more, because if you're going to provide something that is inherently more challenging, then you need to reward that player for engaging in that kind of combat. It's common sense, right? I mean, there's no bullet drop indicator. In simulator battles, you don't have the name tags. But just the aiming in general is the toughest thing in that game. You know, really just looking for that target and figuring out your elevation. That's a huge challenge. I'm even not perfect with it. At long ranges, I have some practice to do. 
But uh, again, there's just not enough reward. So hopefully that's something that they can resolve in time. I don't know if they care, but um, that's one thing that I would like to have added because I think it'll actually just bring more players into those modes. It's like, oh, I can earn more if I go play there. Well, then let me hop over there. But it is more challenging. So risk versus reward. All right, got a little bit more time, so I thought I'd throw in half of a match here. I say half because I already kicked the bucket once, I think, in this one. And uh, so I'm coming back for revenge because you've got a respawn system. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm probably never going to let that go. Anyways, uh, same tank, M4 Sherman. Still working on some of its upgrades. And in this matchup on Eastern Europe, once again, looking at Alpha Point. Uh, I actually like this map quite a bit. Uh, it's really good. There's another one, too, that they've added, which is Fortress something, I think. Uh, played once during a live stream event. Uh, it looked pretty cool, but I haven't fully explored it. But I do like that they've considered player feedback. Uh, our request was that they create more larger maps, uh, and uh, it looks like they've done just that. So this one's nice because you've got a lot of open area on the outside, but then you have the the, uh, the village in the middle, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, you can see that there's a target showing up on the minimap out here, which I'm worried about him coming over the hill, and so that's why I've stopped. Uh, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, which way do I go, and do I need to grab some cover? Uh, because if it's something large, you know, something with a long 75, I might be in trouble. Uh, I do believe that 50 millimeters, uh, the long 50s are, are able to do the job quite nicely as well, so you got to watch out for those. Nice velocity on those cannons. But here we are just kind of angling. See how we're angling this frontal armor to keep safe? Uh... That way, hopefully, we can survive a shot if it comes to that. Hiding the uh, the left side where ammo is stowed. Even with the applique armor there, even though you have that, don't rely on it. It's it's not necessarily going to help because all it takes is just a round uh, going through the center and bouncing around on the inside and you're done. But here we have a target shot out. Looks like the armor absorbs it. He's still not really aware of my presence until now turning it around and that was a solid hit but he's still not dead thankfully we can reload in time for yet another shot out and his crew is just getting ripped to shreds there one more and that is it but it was one of those things i think when i was in there at the time i didn't see the kill text pop up so i kept shooting because i wasn't sure and at that time, that was always kind of the general rule of thumb. If you're not sure, just keep shooting until the thing burns. The other thing is, of course, not all the tanks tend to disappear. Um, ideally, the tank wrecks would remain uh, and perhaps be on fire, kind of like they do in World of Tanks. Uh, that way you could either use them for cover or just, you know, have them there as a cool wartime effect. But we all know that smoke and uh, extra models on the map create performance issues. Um, but again, I think if you didn't have respawns, then it wouldn't really be a problem. But, you know, that's just me thinking logically. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, they've taken Alpha. We need to go get it. So even though I always hate driving through the open, I really don't have too much of a choice. And I'm going to try to cut through the town a little bit and uh, work on getting to that objective. Now, you always have to remember, okay, they have it, so what are they doing now? Well, the smart guys are sitting somewhere waiting for the enemy to show up, so they have the advantage. You have to go into Hawkeye mode and try to catch them before they catch you. Because in many cases, that's what this game comes down to, is who sees who first. And as you'll see... That's going to be a situation we have once we pop out here. Uh, moving very, very slowly because I don't know if we're going to have something to the front. So you can see it's time to stop and scan. Push out gently here. Don't show the side of the armor. Stop and scan. 
Hooking out just a little bit more. Angle some of that front armor. Sign in the way. Stopping to scan. Target acquired. Shot out. Messing him up quite a bit there, but he's still alive. His driver's still going, and he backs up. I no longer have a shot. And I'm looking to see if he has any friends. And just scanning. You have to be very still sometimes. Just sit still. Don't move around too much. And, and turn the turret and look around. Or just hold C down and, and scan around with your own head. Uh, don't move too much because it's it's a way to give away your position. A lot of people are doing exactly what I'm doing and they're waiting for something to start moving so they can catch it, turn that turret around and blast you. But I believe somebody crept up and took him out, finished him off. So and then I see a friendly passing by there on the other side. I figure, well, it's time for me to go ahead and move up and try to help out because you can see that by them capturing that point, They've almost evened up the uh, score, and uh, time is ticking. But I have this feeling that they just don't have many tanks left, uh, so I'm going to go for it and hope for the best. Again, I really do like this map. It's, it's just nice. It's got, you know, these bridges that kind of act as choke points. And uh, it's just full of, you know, a variety of terrain. Once again, kind of just having trouble getting up this bridge. I don't know why. Need some more horsepower. But uh, I don't have my engine upgraded either, so that could be part of the problem. I tend to go for things that upgrade uh, the gun components first. Because I'm not moving a whole heck of a lot anyway, the way I play. So coming around this corner, feeling pretty good. Taking the point. Panzer, contact left. Let him have it right in the back. This is beautiful right here. Boom. That did not feel good, but he's still ticking. One more for good measure. Tharshi blows. And again, I think you just caught up in the moment, and hey, why not? One more. <laughs> I never really pay attention to the kill text. I'm like, is he dead? Is he dead? Side strafe, you shot him ten times. His corpse has disappeared. He's gone. It's like, okay, I was just making sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, we finished him off. He wasn't able to ambush anybody. And hostile team has lost all of its vehicles, so that's that. All right, so I think that's going to bring today's video to a close. A couple of good matches there. And I hope everybody's having a good time with uh, 1.45. Obviously, it's rough around the edges. Uh, let's face it, War Thunder is pretty much permanent beta. <laughs> uh, it's just one of those things where I think that's the nature of free-to-play. And we just have to deal with it from time to time. But I think together we can make this a better game. We just need to provide proper feedback. Um... In one example, I've gone ahead and created a forum post in regards to the color of uh, the American vehicles, which seems to be some sort of flat, dark earth, and it's supposed to be an olive drab. Uh, this is known facts, proven. I've collected uh, untouched color photos from that time, some from R.P. Honeycutt's Sherman book, Son of Sherman, Volume 1, and Life magazine. Uh, untouched, not photoshopped, color photography from the 40s showing what color these things actually were. Uh, the color that you're seeing here is something that I think comes mostly from either uh, incorrect paint mixes from certain factories or possibly bad museum repaints. Uh, there are some private collectors and museums that have painted tanks uh, the wrong colors and they've been doing that over the years uh, whether it's a German tank with the wrong camouflage or an American tank with just uh, the wrong flat color so if you do happen to like this color we're not actually looking to remove it but just making it optional uh, so you can keep it if you want but with that it's just one of those things where the OD would take over as the default uh, as I do believe it just kinda comes down to a matter of respecting uh, the men and women that built these machines and uh, making them as accurate as possible. But uh, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate your viewership forever and always. So thank you so much for joining me and I will definitely see you on the next one.